Oh, we're live. Oh, that's me. You're up, buddy. Okay. I'm waiting for the gavel. Okay, before we start our regular meeting, we're going to have a discussion on uh, in the, uh, Murraysville separate storm system. Anybody like to comment on that? Uh, it doesn't appear that we have anybody. Uh, Nobody here? Uh, anybody, would you like to say anything, Mr. Nestico? No, this is the opportunity for the public to present comment on the MS4 program. Um, so we will note that in the uh, application process that uh, nobody appeared to uh, provide comment for this, uh, this cycle. Thank you. Nothing from council? Okay, that's the end of that. Right now, we'll call to order. Dr. Lee Corns. Mrs. Lane. Here. Chair. Mr. Lee Mack. Here. Mr. McKenna. Here. Here. Mr. Spadaro. Here. Mr. Dice. <coughs> Mr. Stepanovich. Here. Mayor Sinan. Here. Pledge of allegiance. <coughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Any unlisted amendments? None this evening. None? All right, consent calendar items. Any questions on A, B, or C? If not, then I have a motion to accept the calendar items. Make a motion to accept the consent calendar items. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Opposed? <laughs> Mr. Mayor, do you have any comments? Yes, tonight? Mr. Spadaro, I do. I have a few tonight. First one is the glass recycling pop-up collection event we have periodically. Next one is Saturday, September 23rd, Veterans Field parking lot, 4200 up Sardis Road, which is right up here past the municipal building from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, sponsors are us, the municipality, and Republic Services. Residents are also encouraged to support the Loaves and Fishes Emergency Food Pantry by donating non-perishable food items. Food Pantry volunteers will be at the pavilion accepting drive-through donations during the same hours. <coughs> Next. Uh, we're looking for vendors, business and organizations to join us on the Westmoreland Heritage Trail on Saturday, October 28th to provide treats to our trick-or-treaters. Help us reach our goal of more than 50 vendors this year. Check out the website and get registered. Uh, regist you're gonna, they want you to register and pass out your treats both and, and have fun. Again, if you have any questions, Murraysville, PA recreation.com or dial here 327-2100 extension 131. Uh, one, an interesting uh, presentation of the ancient art of bonsai presented by Dave Metzger. Learn the history of the bonsai art form, what constitutes a bonsai, and his, see his work in person. This is October 16th, 6 p.m. at the library. Uh, register for this free event by calling the recreation department here again at extension 131 or the library. I have one other announcement that we don't have a slide for tonight. Uh, let's see. The Rotary Club's Oktoberfest is September 30th, 4 to 8 p.m. It's at the Murraysville Fire Department Pavilion down there on Sardis Road, German-style food, beer, and wine. Uh, your ticket includes a pig roast and a couple coupons for a discount on a drink. Uh, as always, the... Uh, It'll proceed, uh, proceeds will benefit local <coughs> charities, families and children welcome, games for kids, and yes, you are welcome to wear your German attire for this event. That concludes my announcements. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, our Chief Administrator, Mr. Nestico, anything to say? Uh, just one item to note, uh, the municipal state aid uh, for our pension um, uh, dollar amount was released this week. We will be receiving 407,000 
$952 uh, towards the pension plan. <clears throat> this is up uh, $45,000 from last year's amount, uh, $45,000 from last year's amount. So a significant increase there, roughly, I believe, 6% or so. Uh, so that helps uh, offset the costs of our municipal pension plans. So that's all for this month. Very good. Okay, thank you. Community input, do we have anybody signed up? <clears throat> Thank you. Is that Joseph Conlon? Please state your name and address, please. Good evening, Council. My name is Dr. Joseph Conklin. I reside at 3815 Harwick Court, Marysville, Pennsylvania. 15668. Uh, I'd like to speak in regards to the short term rental issue that seems to have come up. Uh, I was going to just shut my mouth on this, but today, after I saw the 15 kids get off the bus stop and run down my street, with me being the only parent there, I just couldn't. Uh, also, the Post Gazette, if you look at it today, they have published an article on what happened in the North Side two years ago in the legal ramifications they're still dealing with because they allowed this to get out of control. Um, I've been watching and I've seen and I've heard this person's friend, this person knows somebody in this municipality. I'm here as a resident of this municipality to say what I think. I also wrote a letter to the editor on August 9th, 2023, the Penn Franklin, and I'll read an abrid abridged version here. Dear editor, I was initially pleased to read that Murraysville Council planned to limit short-term rentals to dwelling units in business and mixed-use or properties with at least five acres in residential. I disagreed with allowing short-term rentals in residential, but I figured the five-acre clause was a compromise. Reading the next edition, I immediately became concerned, and all homeowners, especially those with children, should be. My opposition is simple. Like many community members, my family did not choose to live in Pittsburgh. We decided to live in Murraysville. Council should not open the doors to the ways of Pittsburgh or even those to resembling Monroeville. We did not sign up for that when we invested our money in Murraysville. I live on a 24-house street split between retirees and families. Many retirees are starting to move on and downsize. Could you imagine one, two, or even three of those homes becoming short-term rentals? I don't want my children or the neighborhood kids playing on our streets with random people who simply must have a credit card. You can get this down a Cracker Barrel if you want. Um, to rent a home in our neighborhood. I reiterate, reiterate, a home, not an apartment in a tourist area, a home in Murraysville, a $400,000 home in Murraysville. Why even risk the potential of an issue? Criminals don't follow laws or pay attention to permits. I urge counsel not to open the door even a crack. We keep hearing there's only one. If you actually look, there's two. There's one in Airbnb, there's one in Verbo, there's two out in Delmont. Uh, all within the last year, I agree with Councilman Stepanovich, this is a business operating in a residential area. The example of 20 rentals in one year likely netted $20,000. That is a business in a residential area. And this, don't open the door. Let's not be crazy here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anybody else like to say anything? Who didn't sign up? <clears throat> Please state your name and address, please. Uh, Ronald Wolf. I live at 3644 Forbes Trail Drive in Murraysville, 15668-1054. I'm here on a couple issues. One of the issues is who controls or operates and maintains Sardis Road? Is it Murraysville or PennDOT? Does anybody know that answer? Murraysville. Murraysville. Okay then I want to know why they're dumping concrete, boulders, and other things in the creek behind my house to keep the creek from going over toward the roadway. They've knocked over a couple trees in that backyard of mine that are laying almost in the creek. And if it's Murraysville that's doing it, I want them trees taken out by Murraysville. And years ago, I caught them on a Sunday morning with a pick, with a a dump truck, a trailer, and a backhoe doing it about 7 o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. So I know why they're doing it on a Sunday morning because nobody's around from the DEP. 
My other thing is uh, FITSMA. I know you can appoint the board members and that operate FITSMA. Years ago, I was instrumental in going up there and getting that board replaced because nobody on the board had a clue what sewers was or did. There were only two people up there that did at the time. So now, two years ago, I was told they were going to replace the Haymaker Run sewer line because it was defective and crumbling. It's made out of terracotta. Now, all of a sudden, we're not doing anything. I asked at the last meeting if they applied for any uh, infrastructure funds from the federal government. Zero. Why not? And my other question is, why doesn't FITSMA televise their meetings? They got a little room back down there, that is about as big as this, that about eight people can sit down there at the meetings. And the rest is all FITSMA members. That's, that's what I have. And uh, one of the other things is that clean stream out there isn't so clean. I spent five days in a hospital last week on IVs from dirty water in that stream when I got cut. And uh, 23rd, 24th that night, it rained heavy. My neighbor's house at Heather and Forbes Trail, sewage overflowed into the street, down the storm sewer, into the creek. So they haven't fixed anything as far as I'm concerned. And I have a sump, I mean a grinder pump in my yard that they want to take out. Uh -uh, it's not happening. Because I'm not going to put up with the, what the neighbor down the street from me does. Every time it rains heavy and he takes a shower or flushes the toilet, I backs up in his basement. Uh, that's all I have. If you guys can answer Thank you. <clears throat> Bill, you know anything about that dumping out there? No. been better it's probably 15 years ago we were down we put concrete along the edge of the road because the road was being compromised by the stream uh, as far as working on Sunday not to my knowledge uh, unless it's snowing we're not working that's double time for us and we are not working so maybe somebody else no, it was, it was okay I that was 10 or 15 years ago sir that that last incident are you referring to what happened you're saying quite well, recently that's we put the highway slabs in that was at least 15 years ago um, okay well, it's better it's better than 2011 because I'm, I'm telling you it is I, I actually I set those and I was an equipment operator until 2011 when I was moved to Foreman I think any anything else that may have been dumped may be a contractor or someone else dumping it on you. You tell me whatever you want to tell me, but somebody is dumping it there. And I don't think it's a contractor. A trail okay. cam would be helpful. Hmm? A trail cam might be helpful. Sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Anybody else? Thank you. 
Okay, liaison comments. Hang on. Mr. Spadaro, he's... Whenever, oh, he's back. I well, guess. This yes, new crew more. took over at the SOAR administration, FITSMA. They cambered every SOAR in the municipality, allegedly. I don't know for sure. But I know for sure they were in my yard cameron one day. And uh, all of a sudden they said, stop, don't do, quit doing what you're doing. A big boulder came down to SOAR. They said, so we've got a big rock we got to get out of the SOAR system. I'm thinking, why does a closed source system have rocks in it in the first place? And the other question I have is, why can't we have Mr. Rombaugh or somebody from the SOAR Authority come down here and explain to us what they've done since they got here, why they haven't gone through with replacing the, the Haymaker Run line, and why they never asked for, for uh, infrastructure money from the federal government? It's, there's billions of dollars out there, and we didn't ask for a dime. Mr. Wolf, Mr. Rumbaugh, and Mr. I'd like, I'd like a report, have them report on that SOAR line, the camera, what it showed for the length of, of Sardis Road, and have them pre do a presentation here. Mr. Wolf, Mr. Rumbaugh, and Mr. Mitel do come out periodically to our meetings, and they do come out and present at our meetings periodically. I mean, I don't hear well. That's okay. Um, Mr. Rumba and Mr. Mitel do come periodically to our meetings, and they do present. It would be fantastic if you could reach out, maybe with your what you well, would specifically I, I like to have addressed. Well, I reached out to them the last meeting, <laughs> and that was their answer. We're not going to we're not going to replace this line. We're going to patch it. And evidently, in the '90s, there was a study done by the last engineering firm that said that the whole line needed replaced. And evidently. When Mr. Rumba took over, he admitted that the SOAR line was bad and it was going to be replaced. Then all of a sudden they got one bid from only one SOAR contractor and everything went out the window. When's the last time you talked to the SOAR authority? This past week? Last meeting. Last week. Yeah, I was at the meeting. I haven't been able to go. I've had back surgery. Next, I broke my neck in a bad accident down on Sardis Road a couple of years ago. Had back surgery last year. I need a knee replaced in another month. It's just been piling up on me. Plus, my wife had her knee done, and she's been having problems. I have to stick around the house for most of the part. You may want to, if, if you have some of those questions in writing, or if you could send them in writing, that would but be I beneficial. Because I know that we have to prioritize where funds go. Um, I know that we, with a consent decree, we're required to replace and repair. It's the only way we could have extra taps yeah. in the municipality. But I also understand that they have to prioritize where funding is spent. Other, but you have valid questions. The other thing I want to know is why, don't they, why, aren't, why is it his decision that the meetings aren't televised? Yeah. He just flat out told time. guys at yeah, meetings a couple of years ago, they're not going to be televised. Thank you. We'll, we'll look into that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. They should be televised. Everybody in this municipality has a... Thank you, okay. Mr. Wolf. Let's move on. Okay, we can move liaison on now. Comments. All right. Lia li liaison comments and committee reports. Who wants to start? Library okay. meets tomorrow evening. I'm meeting tomorrow evening. Okay, so. okay Carl. Uh, the Parks and Recreation Foundation uh, met on this past Monday. Uh, a couple of things from that. Uh, in order to increase the... Uh, voting membership from uh, what we currently have, it was decided that both the mayor position and the liaison uh, would be a step into the role of advisors and open up the board to uh, two additional members. Uh, there will be advertisements to add the two members. The uh, skill sets required are communications, you know, the marketing, et cetera, and also uh, someone with experience in uh, fundraising. And uh, the director, Carly Green, had indicated she'll be looking at modifications or reviewing, <coughs> if you will, the uh, bylaws of the foundation. Uh, the planning committee uh, were met on the 11th or 12th, and it was uh, on the agenda was an advisory meeting, and it had to do with the choice gas property on 22 and Berlin Farms Road. What they're uh, looking to do is get a license for alcohol. And this license is a little unique in that it requires a separate 2,500-foot separate building. 
And just to give you an idea, the sizing, the current building there is 2450, so it's a little bit bigger than that. Uh, it's uh, because of the uh, combined acreage, or not acreage, but square footage ap approaching 5,000, they'll need 20 parking spaces. They currently have 16, and they'll have to have four additional uh, parking places. This uh, new building would be on the left side of the <coughs> current structure. It will have a glass front and a brick. It'll just, it'll look, <coughs> according to the uh, engineer, better, if you will, than the current building. A uh, storm plan will be needed. Uh, it would be, it was taken under uh, advisement by the Planning Commission. They'll make a decision uh, on starting the, uh, the process here in the next uh, planning meeting or perhaps sooner than that. Okay, Carl, thank you. Amy Lee Cohen. The only thing I would mention is on our agenda tonight um, regarding the MMO. Last school board meeting was this past Monday, the 18th. There was nothing of mutual concern. Next meeting is next month, although it did get moved. So okay, thank anybody you, who's interested in attending should note that. Matt McKenna. Uh, yeah, the uh, Parks and Recreation we met last week. Uh, we've been continuing to try to meet at uh, different parks uh, while the weather's nice. So we had ours at Chambers Park this time. Uh, so the, all of the, the members, we got to walk the park, look at all the facilities, talk about possible improvements and what we can do. Um, Bill was there, so it was very helpful to see each one of these parks as we get a plan for what to do. Um, so that was pretty much it. And then also the uh, trick or treat on the trail is coming up. That's a big event for that's uh, upcoming. So please, if you want to be a vendor or, or a sponsor or uh, to uh, participate in trick or treat, make sure you get online and register for that. And that's what, October 1st? That is the. No, no that, that, that opens registration. Yeah, yeah. Registration. Yeah, it'll open October 1st. Yep. And it will probably close October 1st, an hour later. Yeah, it's, uh, it fills up very quickly. All right, but, thank you, Matt. Yep, that's it. Uh, medic one meets tomorrow night. Okay. No administrating uh, short-term discussion on the short-term rentals. We're going to table that tonight because we want to make sure we have a full council when we bring that up. And our president is absent tonight, so we're going to table that for the time being. Okay. Engineering, community, development, public works. Okay. <clears throat> now we move to 13. Pardon me? Uh, 9B. I'm sorry. What did I miss something? Yeah, I'm trying to pull that up right now. Oh, this one right here. I'm sorry. Okay. Pass that up. Uh, 9B. Okay, let me start on that. Uh, this has been an issue that's been around the municipality for about two years. Uh, there is a very small piece of property at the intersection of Freeport Street and Route 66 up in Delmont that is actually in the municipality of Murraysville. Um, the property owner approached Mr. Morrison and Mr. Quadropolis a couple years ago about uh, seeing if the municipality would be willing to have that particular piece of property um, taxed and owned and be within the boundary lines of the borough of Delmont rather than the municipality of Murraysville. Um, that is a permissible thing to do under the law. Um, Delmont would have to pass an ordinance accepting the piece of property. Murraysville would have to pass an ordinance agreeing to release the piece of property. Uh, the property owner desires the property to be in the borough of Delmont, as I understand it, for the purposes of putting a billboard on the property, which is not, which would not be in compliance with our zoning requirements because of the size of the property, but apparently is in compliance with the requirement. Uh, the, the Delmont, Borough Delmont zoning laws. So it's a very, very small piece of property. I don't know if members of council are familiar with where it's at. Uh, is that the hardware store? Once it is right where Freeport Street, Mr. Spadero, comes out onto 66 across from Noka Road. There it is. Yeah. Okay. It's that little 
point. So that's it right there. Okay. Um, you know, there's not going to be a significant in, uh, consequence to our tax revenue. It's vacant. It's de minimis in size. It's purely a matter of council whether or not they want to do it. Uh, if council um, would be willing to go along with it, uh, my opinion is that as long as it doesn't cost Murraysville anything for doing the survey work, uh, the legal work, <coughs> property owner re reimburses Murraysville for my review fees and things of that sort, I don't think this should be something that our taxpayers should incur any expense in doing. Um, but uh, that's it. Well, it's just a workshop, I yeah. yeah. Okay. Any comments on it, anybody? There'd be no expense then to the municipality? No. I think that's the condition we drive, Mr. Right. Panovich, is that as long as there's no expense to the municipality, um, okay. Um, but of course, that decision is ultimately all of yours. Um, and um, I think we wanted to, Mr. Nestico and I just wanted to have a conversation yeah. with it about this because if council's sort of on board, um, then I can let the attorney for the property owner know. Uh, because it wouldn't be fair to them, frankly, to spend all the money doing the survey and work okay. and things of that sort, and then find out we are not on board with the concept. Uh, Mr. Long, just as a question, is there any history that, to your knowledge, of when something like this is done and recognizing it's a very small piece of land, but <clears throat> it does have some value, uh, that we be compensated for that? Whatever, like the square footage, if it's 2,000 square feet, then it should be worth so um, much. I could, I actually thought about that, Mr. Stepanovich, and I could approach the attorney for uh, the property owner and advise that, you know, figure out what the approximate tax revenue is and say, you know, get 10 years worth or 20 years worth or something of that sort just to get some compensation for it. I don't, I don't think that would be unfair. Just one question and, and then I guess one comment. It looks like this first transpired, maybe the first contact from the Evolio Law Group uh, in July of 2021. Is this just the speed of, of government at this time or was there a reason why it did not progress? I, I, you'd have to, I don't know, you'd have to ask Mr. Morrison and Mr. Quadropoulos the, the history of that. You know, I found out about this, you know, upon Quite my peaceful. coming on board. Um, well, Mr. Malacher represents the property owner. And he still does? Yeah. Retire again. Is that because <laughs> the House bill didn't pass until 2021? Yeah, it, it's a I mean, it, recent... I think it has to do something with the law and the bill that passed. Yeah. It looks like yeah. they've had two years to... No, the bill... Well, right. Right, I right. That's, I guess that's my question. Yeah, was, was there some other extreme concern? I know Mr. Morrison has lengthy and valuable knowledge of, of the municipality. So if there was some other concern... Um, Barring there being another concern, we typically stand in property owners' rights, and I would, if he purchases the property, is able to use the property in a way that benefits him, and there's no expense to the municipality or our taxpayers, then I would fully support it. Yeah. I, um, what is the billboard for? I'm just out of curiosity. The, uh, is it Ace a business? Hardware Store. Yeah. Now, uh, my understanding is for the Ace Hardware Store, which is now where Fatour Supermarket used to be. Yeah. And he owns that? That's where he wants to put the billboard on. He wanted to purchase the property, it looked like. I don't know that he's going to be the owner of the property, okay. Link, but I know that that's where, that's what I was told by Mr. Malacher. Yeah. Okay, any other comments from council? If I may, uh, just to try to provide an answer to your question, and I don't know if this is 100% accurate, I can follow up, but I believe when the proposal was initially presented to the municipality, it was prior to the change in the law, and at that time you would have had to go to court petition the court. Mm. I think since that time, um, the House bill that was presented then was eventually passed through uh, legislation and, and adopted, uh, I think sometime in 22. And so mm. it kind of brought it back to the forefront because now the process is significantly easier mm -hmm. because it's by mutual consent of the uh, adjacent municipalities or the adjoining municipalities. So I don't know if that is a correct recollection of the history of it, but I think that's why it took 
So uh, a little bit of time to kind of come back to the forefront again. Yeah. And also with the consent, of course, of the property owner. That's what I was yeah, going to yeah. ask. So if the that... municipalities and the property owner has to be on board. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, we okay with this is to go that ahead? property owner or the one that is... Jamie's? I'm not sure. So when you say... I'm sorry, I have, I have one more question. When you say property owner, are you talking about of that very small parcel or are you talking about the house that's adjacent to that very small parcel whose backyard is... The owner is of that very small parcel. Now, I don't know, Ms. Ling, if that is the same person that owns the house. Okay. I have not done title on it. Okay, I would be curious to know that, just okay. because it is essentially that billboard will be going in this person's backyard. I can check the tax mapping site. Based on the tax map, uh, it looks like it is different ownership. So it's something that... Uh, I would think that that person, I don't know. My recollection, that property was... Mike, can you pull that back up? <laughs> can you put that map back up real quick? Okay. <clears throat> well, not requiring a vote. Um, just an yeah. indication. Mike, of can you move that white thing? Yeah. Can you move that white thing? Right. <clears throat> Everybody good with that? I, I, have, a, I have a question. What, um, th that, no, that property, though, so where the billboard is, that sliver, but the rest would still be part of Murraysville. Then. That is correct. Only so we would, uh, we would, triangle. yeah, that that pink line would just kind of go around that property the yeah, other way. Exactly, Mr. McKenna. Okay. So I see what you're saying, that the house behind it's still part of Murraysville and, and would have a billboard I mean, that's in their kinda, backyard. Yeah. That person's backyard, how big is that billboard going to be? Is it going to, yeah. Jimmy, where's that? Okay. There's a preliminary saying? survey mm -hmm. that's right prepared by Morris Moore that, like that, that shows mm -hmm. what the new boundary line will be. Okay. Uh, Mr. Long, just to, to make sure I understand then, who owns the, pop, the property currently? I, I can't remember okay. who this owns is, the yeah. property. Mr. Is it's, not the mer it's, it's not unknown. I mean, the, it's not municipal land. It is not municipal okay. land. Okay. okay. Yeah, it is privately owned. owned. The records are right here. So if I click on the property that we're discussing, it lists, uh, this is on the county GIS site. So yep. presumably this would be the, the name of the property owner. Uh, it is possible for this to be inaccurate, but typically it is accurate. Yeah. Uh, and then the adjacent parcel is owned by a different individual. Uh, so two different owners on the two properties that we're discussing. Yep. This, this corner, or end lot I should say, is the one that is in discussion for the advertising sign. Yeah. What's the annual tax revenue on that? Yeah, if you scroll down here, it's a little over two hundred dollars, I believe. I have, I have another question. No, I don't think that's correct. No. It says, uh, it says improved value. So. Well, no, but below is the municipal tax, the school, and then the county. Yeah, but look at the improved value. I think there's a house on it. Yeah, the that's not. Property is vacant. Okay, then, yeah, there's some air there. It may, it may not be. That seemed like a, an awful lot of tax for a small vacant lot. Yeah, and in fact, the description in, indicates house garage. It may have formerly been uh, an adjoining property with uh, the neighborhood. I guess I'd be a little curious as to know that history. Like, did they, did somehow that, do we have any municipal record where that piece got parceled off separately at some point. Let's say it looks I like mean, it looks like it's part of that larger parcel across the street, Mr. Nestica. Look uh, at the twenty six yeah, acre. The, the arrows uh, there. There. On the left, there's, on the left there's, side. There's the land tie. Yeah. Straight across the street. No, no, across no, no. sixty six. Oh, okay. This direction. Yeah. Yeah. The one above your mouse. So perhaps Mr. Right there. Long. Mm -mm. Okay. Same name. That's there you go. That's it. Part of 072 on the other side of 60. That makes sense. So this is part of what, Mr. Long and Mr. Nestico, perhaps you could, I think you understand the concern. Perhaps you could gather a little background information and maybe let us know at the next meeting. Beg your pardon, Dr. Kors? Perhaps we, you could gather a little bit more information for us based on some of these concerns. If you could let us know at the next meeting, then maybe some council members might feel more confident giving an answer. Okay. What, um, question, if, 
if it, the property owner next to it or whatever was okay with this and whatnot, is there any option within our ordinance that we would be able to grant that and not give that property up to Delmont, or is that not even an option? Well, it would have to comply with our zoning ordinance, and mm. you know, I, I did not specifically research that right. because it was my understanding from the communication from Mr. Morrison that he said it did not comply with our zoning ordinance, hence the reason to, to do it. To okay. do it. I can find that out if you all would like to. I mean, I'm all for somebody being able to do whatever they want with their okay. own property. I don't have an issue with that. I have an issue with the neighbor part, mm -hmm. making sure that this is not someone. I don't know what Delmont's, <coughs> Delmont's right. code is. I don't know if it's going to be <coughs> some 30-foot high billboard blocking this guy's light for that he's had for mm -hmm. 40 years. I mean, it's a legitimate. Question. I just yeah. want to yeah. be sure that it's a good, you know, a good, right. good neighbor thing. That because that house is still a taxpayer mm -hmm. of Marysville. Right. Yeah. Under the law, the no, the, it would be in property Delmont. owner would have standing Delmont. to check. Mm -hmm. well, the the yeah. line would be the billboard would be. Oh, in Delmont. Look forward to additional information. Pardon, look forward to additional information and okay. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I will supply. Let's thank you forward. so much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Right. Okay. You're going to find out more information for mean, everybody mm -hmm. and then we'll bring it up again. Okay. Okay? No Thank you. Okay. Hey, let's move on here to uh, 13A. I'd like to make a motion to authorize staff to solicit bids for the lease of oil and gas rights for approximately 234.60 acres of municipally owned property, Duff Park at tax map numbers 49-14-00-0-071-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
<clears throat> okay. 13B, may I have a motion? Make a motion to approve resolution number 779-23, authorizing a local share account grant application with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to complete a restroom insula installation at the site of Duff Park. Second. Thank you, Jamie Ling and Jamie Ling Corns. Here we go. Yes, this item uh, is for a restroom and uh, installation and uh, parking lot improvements at Duff Park. Um, we'd like to seek out uh, grant funding for this project. In order to do so, council must adopt a resolution that accompanies our grant application. That application is due by the end of September. Uh, we identified this project because it is one that is on the 2024 CIP. Um, the uh, restroom obviously is a, an amenity that uh, would be nice at that facility as well as the parking lot improvements, uh, a retaining wall, uh, installation and some of the uh, stream bank work as well. So the grant itself would be for $150,000 or that, that's the application that we'd be putting in. And so I'd ask council to consider approving this item so that we could put that grant application into the state in hopes to secure uh, one of these uh, local share account uh, Commonwealth grants. Michael, is it like a 50-50? Is the total cost 300? No, this one, uh, they would fully fund their... Fully fund. Uh, yeah, the municipality can share in the cost, but they, they also fully fund projects that are applied for under this grant. Any other questions? Is it an ADA grant? Or Any other questions? ADA grant? No, this one is the, uh, like the gaming money that you hear about, local okay. share account. Um, All right. That's through the, um, well, I'm drawing a blank here. Um, the... Uh, Shoot. Casino? Or? Yeah, well, it's the casino funding through the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Financing Authority. I apologize. I'm drawing a blank there. I don't have any questions. I'll just say thank you for once again trying to be resourceful to provide amenities to our taxpayers without using their tax dollars. It would be very nice to have a restroom in that park. Yeah, it's a very highly used park, so that's a great, that's very much needed. So I think yeah, thank absolutely. You. Vote. Any other questions? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Need a motion on uh, 13C. Make a motion to approve the 2024 minimum municipal obligation or MMO for the non uniform and police pension plans, the amount of $600,210. Second. Second. And this item, uh, the 2024 MMO is slightly less than the 2023 amount, so it's uh, roughly $20,000 less than we'll be paying into the uh, pension plan this year. Uh, again, we, as I mentioned earlier in the meeting, uh, we received state funding toward uh, this MMO uh, payment. Um, and just to be clear, I, I caught myself, I mentioned that it was a 6% increase in state aid. That is not in the total dollar amount, but relative to the unit value. Uh, we did receive more than 6% of an increase in funding, but that's because we have more units this year as compared to last. So I wanted to correct that, but this would be the 2024 MMO calculation amount, uh, and I'd ask council to approve this item uh, as well. Thank you. Any questions from anybody? Nope. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Appro uh, opposed? Motion carries. Okay, then we need a motion on 13D. I make a motion to approve a two-year agreement with Hoffman Kennels for animal control for the period January 1 of 2024 to December 31st of 2025. Second. Thank you, Jamie and Matt. Any questions on Hoffman Kennels? Several. Um, I, I've had input uh, that Hoffman Kennels <laughs> Kennels uh, has had instances of mistreating the animals that they've had in their care. And uh, I've actually, uh, I, I mean, I, I have to say, I'm going back maybe 25, 30 years where we had a dog that, uh, well, I'll explain it in that I brought it up. Uh, my son had given the dog to his friend who lived in a trailer park. He, had a, he got a girlfriend. And the, the, uh, my friend's son at that time came down. We were on vacation, tied the dog to our door. We came back. The dog was in bad shape. And uh, we, went we went over to the kennel, if you will, 
and the dog was in very, very bad shape there, I think, while, well, because we knew somehow, we knew by the neighbors when the dog had been taken. So without going in a whole lot more detail, I have personal experience where the animal was not treated well. <coughs> so I, my question would be, and this, since then, as there's been a lot of time since then, but um, have we considered a, uh, any alternatives? One. Yes, I, I, I don't mean to speak. Yeah, so, so Carla, I, I understand your concerns are very, very valid, especially with personal experience. Yeah. I can tell you from my wrapping up eight years on council, and I think Tony will echo this and Reed as well, um, there have been a number of concerns expressed about Hoffman's, some of them hearsay, some of them uh, factual. We have continued as a council every single time that we've evaluated uh, animal control. We've continued to look to other options. To my knowledge, there have not been any other options. No one else willing to come out here, number one. But the second thing that we have done is we've continued to tighten up our agreement with them. And you'll notice um, even more mock-up in, in tonight's, for example, um, increasing the period of time that they will hold an animal from five to 10 days. Um, and increasing the number of days a week that they're searching for animals so that there's not as much maybe time going by. Um, I don't know, unless there is another option that is, is brand new, I don't know that there are any other options. And I think we need to continue to be extremely vigilant, but I have not personally heard of any recent complaints over recent instances. Uh, and quite frankly, even if there were, there might be another kind of charge to come up to handle the situation, but I don't think we have any other options. Just from, and if, is that your yeah. recollection as well, Tony? And Rich? Yeah. You'll never find anybody who wants to do it. Yeah. Now, are they supposed to pick up the dead deer also? No, that's, no, that's different. That's what? Different company. Yeah, that's different. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like we're between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. <laughs> but, but again, it, it has, if anyone else has knowledge of, even if you do, of there being a very recent concern, um, I don't know that we have another option. I agree. We've tightened the contract up as much as we probably can. It's, they have to hold the dogs longer and whatever, and a lot of the dogs are chipped today anyway, so they try to find out who the chip is and get the dog back to the owner as quickly as possible. Um, I, I don't know that we have any other options. And, and he, this Hoffman does do many, many other municipalities. We're not the only one. So. Yeah, I mean, I think at the end of the day, if, if they're, he's aware that there are concerns, he's very aware, so I think that there's a, a level of caution there now, but quite frankly, if there were some concerns, animal cruelty, et cetera, that would be an entirely different matter than our agreement with them. That would be facing, I'm sure, a variety of legal troubles for that. And are, they, are they currently in litigation? Are they being sued? No. No, and it's been years, I think, since there's been any actual You'll have to take a vote because I'm going to have a vote now. So ask for a vote. Ask for a vote on yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anything else on Hoffman? I know every year we talk about this. Yeah. And every year we have concerns about it, but just nobody else wants to do it. Yeah. Okay. So let's take care. Of I have one more question. What other municipalities or boroughs or townships use them? Jeez. Borough of Export uses them. Take a vote. Okay. Does PT? Uh, yeah, after the discussions. You know? Yeah, anybody? I don't know that answer. I do know that. Um, I'm not a favorite, so let's have a vote. Most, if not all, of the surrounding communities do use that. And I would say begrudgingly, uh, all the feedback that's been provided so far is, is pretty much spot on. It's a difficult decision, and I think every council that uh, in the last two communities I've been involved with, we've faced the same problem. Um, they're kind of the, the only show in town, so to speak. Um, so it's, most councils have this same discussion and ultimately um, end up c contracting with them uh, by default. So that's kind of the situation we find ourselves in as well. I think if there were anyone else out there that was providing the service, we would certainly be open to that and consider that. Uh, mm -hmm. That option doesn't present itself. Now this is just the first time I've been involved with making a decision on this, so this is all. It looks like Penn Township uses Hoffman's as well. Okay. How's the cost compared to the previous years? Um, I think I can answer that because I believe that um, the 
Uh, monthly fee is going up $5 per month. And um, emergency calls remain the same. That was the only thing. OK. <clears throat> uh, I think that's the only change, the $5 okay. per, per month. Well, I think if somebody's looking to start a business, I couldn't do it as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's good at that. <laughs> Okay, you ready? We're going to have a vote on this. Uh, can I have a roll call, please? Roll call. Roll call. Dr. Lee Corns? Y yes. Mrs. Ling? Yes, I guess. Mr. Lee Mack? Yes. Mr. McKenna? Yes. Mr. Spadero? No. Mr. Stepanovich? No. Just to show that there, are, there is some dissension with <laughs> Okay, uh, the motion is passed. Uh, what is it, uh, four to two? Four to two. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're on 13 E. E. Make a motion. Yeah, I have a motion. Make a motion to authorize renewal of the fiduciary liability insurance with Chubb for the period of September 1st, 2023 to August 31st of 2024. Amount of $5,860. Second. Thank you, Jamie and Jamie. Uh, this uh, is the fiduciary liability coverage for a pension plan. The uh, premium of 5860 is the same as last year. And um, the premium is paid from the pension assets. So staff would ask council to approve this item uh, relative to our pension plan. Any questions, comments? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we go to uh, community development 14A. May I have a motion? No, we tabled that. Oh, what's, I'm sorry. Yeah. We tabled that. 15A. I make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1079-23, an ordinance accepting streets located in the Villa Siena plan situated in the municipality of Murraysville County, Westmoreland, and Commonwealth, Pennsylvania, as part of the public highway system of the same. Second. Thank you, Jamie and Matt. Mac. Uh, this item is, uh, includes one street and the plan of homes, Siano Court. Um, the uh, engineering department did inspect the roadway and everything has passed uh, the inspection. Uh, so the ordinance would need to be adopted in order to accept this into the municipal roadway system. Any questions on this? We did discuss this before. Yes. So when we discuss these onboarding of new development roads, we, we generally talk engineering. What about service-wise? Um, do we um, anticipate any impact to uh, the load on the Public Works Department? Uh, yes, so we are, I think, inching closer um, to, uh, well, I should say this, the municipality has a plan in place, uh, staffing plan based on the amount of roadway that we cover. And as we do add roadways into uh, our purview, uh, it increases the amount of demand from our staff. I think we are inching closer to uh, needing potentially a new hire in the Public Works Department. I can't speak to it for sure, and I don't want to put Bill on the spot, but I know that um, it's been some time since we did uh, uh, add a new individual into uh, the department, but we've added roadways since the last hire that I think we're, we're inching closer to that, uh, that threshold. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. App approved. Okay, 15B may have a motion. Please. A motion to authorize the release of a bond being held to ensure completion of the required improvements at the J.B. Tonkin Compressor Station. Second. Thank you, Jamie and Carl. Uh, yes, the contractor requested uh, the release of the bond. It's a $807,000 bond for site improvements, and the contractor did complete those improvements 
as of 9-6-23. Okay. Any comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. If, uh, 15C. May I have a motion, please? Motion to authorize advertisement of the DPW 423 Basin Retrofit Project. Second. Thank you, Jamie Lee and Jamie Lee Corns. As part of the MS4 program, we identified basins that are candidates for retrofitting, um, and that would be included in this project. Uh, the ponds identified are Mallard Landing, Fair Oaks, Le Chateau, and Bartlett Court. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Here we go to 16A. I'll make a motion to authorize a request for bids for removal, replacement, and reconfiguration of the HVAC system on the municipality, uh, Murraysville Municipal Building. Second. Thank you. Jamie? And Matt? Back. Mr. Brano. Yes, we're here tonight to uh, get your approval to uh, solicit bids for the removal of four HVAC units and the uh, rebuilding of the system. We need to upgrade the actual brains of the system to uh, something computerized that we can uh, save a little money on electricity and be able to operate it. Currently, the system, uh, one of the units over the police station is completely uh, in dis disrepair. We cannot even repair that at this point. Um, the other units are 28 years old. This project started in 2018 with uh, the former directors setting aside uh, money to study uh, this, this system. Since then, uh, you know, we had COVID, we had some other things go on, so this project was pushed back. And as long as things were running up top there, it, uh, we kept crossing our fingers and going with it. But at this point, like I said, it's, it's breaking now. The police have no AC. Uh, we have six portable units over there trying to keep those guys cool. So it's, it's time to, uh, to get started with this. Thank you. Does that include the, um, the library? Yes. Okay. The, the entire building will be uh, revamped. Um, we're going to change all of the, uh, the controls that, that work it. Uh, there seem taking a pull in this building. No one seems to be very comfortable here. Um, if you've ever been in the uh, boardroom, sometimes you need a winter coat in the middle of summer in there. And other times, uh, the people on the outskirts of the building are just sweating. So hopefully by upgrading the system to some modern controls, uh, we'll be able to keep everybody happy, police, the library, and of course, admin. This is a question, uh, is, are there zones? Meaning I'm thinking the police actually are there 24 hours, seven, seven days a week. So is there a, a zone there that you know, they would perhaps utilize air conditioning and heating when the rest of the area will not? Is there any? Ironically, Mr. Stepanovich, I've noticed that. Our public works building, we're able to actually set. When we're not there, we can actually turn those units off. This building, it's, it's actually out of control is what it is. We have no control of it. So if you walk in here on Sunday morning, uh, the air conditioner is just blasting. It's, it's 70 degrees here. There's no, there's no zoning of the system. So I believe, and I'm sure of it, that uh, over time we're going to save a lot, a lot of money through electricity at least. I noticed in the uh, accounts payable there were about $3,400 for last month. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping we can do better once we put uh, proper equipment up there that yeah. can be regulated because there's no reason for this side of the building to be uh, 65, 69 degrees or whatever it is that runs off on Sunday morning when no one's here. Right. So that's plan. Uh, unfortunately, we're 28 years into the building now, so it's, it's time to start replacing some major general plan items. <clears throat> Those other units lasted 28 years, you're saying? Yes, sir. It's a long time. That's good. <laughs> now, you get warranties on these new ones you put in? 
Yes, we're looking to get uh, one-year parts and labor. That seems to be standard in the uh, unit uh, in the uh, business, and hoping to get five years on a compressor and ten years on the uh, heat exchangers. That's what we're putting the bid on as. Any other questions? In our briefing, you had mentioned that you were seeking to bid this instead of utilizing the CoStar's method to purchase. Can you shed a little light on that in the context there, please? I can. Um, as you know, if we deem to go through a CoStar's uh, vendor, as long as they're on board and uh, we decide to do it, we'll do it that way. I did get a number of 375000 for this. Um, I have learned with heavy equipment that sometimes putting this out for bid i can get a better price something's telling me that to put this out for bid it would have saved me a whole lot of trouble just to go co-stars but i think we're going to save money by competitively bidding this Makes sense to me does co-star just get the equipment and not the instant and then you bid out who installs that or does co-star no if you're a co-star vendor so it comes you're you're able to in to actually install the product. CoStars is just given a, a way to, to, to bid. Right. So if you're CoStars and someone down the road is, then you two should be able to give me the same bid. Right. Now I have in the past worked with Caterpillar through CoStars to dicker a little bit with the price. And oh, yeah. being they're local and they work with us, they're, they're willing to do that. I'm not so sure that somebody that we haven't worked with We'll, we'll be able to do that. So let's, let's send it out. Um, if you don't mind, give me the approval to uh, send it out for bids, and I'll be back to you here uh, next month, and I'll let you know how we fared. Just, just one more quick question. So sure. put, say it goes out to bid, you get a response. Let's say you're able to make a, a decision within a month or so. Um, what's your sense of timeline, how long it will take to replace the entire system and for the building and our officers, library, to have fully functioning, positively functioning system? Very, very good question, doctor. Um, they're, they're saying 20 weeks to just get the equipment ordered and to a location. Um, there it seems to me like another week. I did mention in the specs that I want to be able to operate the police station has to operate 24 seven. Um, there's gonna be a giant crane parked out here which is gonna consume most of the front of the building uh, to lift these units. A lot of what the price of this is, is gonna be crane and rigging because they have to bring in such a large crane. So it, it doesn't make any sense to break this down and do just the police next year or maybe the rest of them. Let's just get it done, we'll pay the crane price, but in the meantime, I wanna still be able to work the building. So. Want to try to get this to where staff can work in here, maybe in the springtime where we can open some windows. Certainly wouldn't want to do it in the middle of winter or the dead of summer. So I'm trying to move as quickly as I can here now and get this for springtime. Well, it sounds like it would be well aligned. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No, thank you for all your work, Bill. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> All in favor of this? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. <laughs> old business. Mr. Nestico, any old business? No, no old business. Any new business? None this evening. None tonight. Okay, we're going to adjourn for an executive session. Are we? Do I hear a motion? 3644 Buddy's Drive. I just asked a bunch of questions before, and I thought I heard you say that, Ms. Kearns, that I need to submit my questions in writing. You do not need to, but it might be helpful for us to be able to get additional follow up for you because the FTMSA board members are not here, nor is I the kind council of liaison. I made myself clear on my questions, and I didn't understand why I should have to submit them in writing. Well, you don't have to submit it in writing. What she's saying is, is if you made a list of questions, it would be easier for us to try to get answers questions. to all those questions. Okay. As I opposed can drop to... them off at any time. Yeah, the, the yeah. people who could best answer those questions are not present. 
Okay. So, for example, um, Council President Dane Dice is the liaison to FTMSA, but he is not here. Yeah. Um, and given that FTMSA board members are not here, you deserve answers to your questions. You deserve right. solid answers to your questions. So you don't have to put anything in writing. Okay. But should you, I think it would better enable us to serve you. Okay. okay. That's all I needed to know. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you. You're welcome. Like to make a uh, we do have a brief executive session. Second the motion. Motion adjourned. Good night, Marysville. All in favor, aye. All in favor, aye. say aye. Opposed? Thank you, Carl. Okay.